G'day guys and welcome back to Cookies Critters. So do me a favour and close your eyes. I want you to imagine that you've just stubbed your big toe on the coffee table. Now this sucks, it hurts, it happens all the time. You go to bed and you wake up in the morning and your big toe is black. Throughout the day, that black starts to spread through your foot and up to your knee. By bedtime, your big toe has now fallen off. Now if you were a bearded dragon, this would be diagnosed as tail rot. So guys, stick around. In this video, we're going to show the methods that we use here at Cookies Critters to treat tail rot and bearded dragons. So what do you reckon guys? Let's get started. Welcome back guys. So today we are discussing tail rot and bearded dragons. If you are new to this channel though, please do us a favour, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications so you don't miss a coming video. I want to start with what it looks like so that way we can identify the problem so that way we know how to treat them. So I'll put a picture up here of what tail rot in a bearded dragon looks like. Now essentially what it is, the, uh, the tip of the tail is dying, so it's a necrosis and uh, there are many ways that this can happen and we'll discuss that a little bit further through this video. So there are varying degrees of, uh, of tail rot and essentially it starts off as the tip is starting to go a, uh, a grey colour and sort of evolving into a darker black. Now as the, uh, the rot progresses, uh, incrementally part of the tail will start to fall off. It almost looks like you're uh, having a smoke and the, uh, the tip of the cigarette's falling off, the ash bit is falling off. This is something that you have to take seriously, right? If left untreated, worst case scenario, the dragon will lose its tail, which at the end of the day is a cosmetic thing. But the, uh, the serious side of this is the infection can travel through the body into the internal organs, leading to death. So that's the severity of it, and this is why we need to treat tail rot. Okay, and so by the picture, yeah, it looks like my dragon has tail rot, but what caused it? So Ian, that's a great question, and I'm glad you asked it. So the main reason and the main cause for a, uh, a tail rot is, uh, is through a trauma. Now this is typically when a bearded dragon is a young baby, and it is in an enclosure with the rest of its clutch mates and there's a, uh, a competition, the, uh, the fighting for the food. Now, ultimately, someone gets nipped and uh, someone pays the price for it. And then this small little nip on the tail can uh, create an infection and create the tail rot. So we can easily reduce the likelihood of this happening by simply having adequate enclosure sizing or adequate enclosures, so that way we can split the bearded dragons according to their size and according to their feeding response. Now, at about the three month age, I implore you, please separate your bearded dragons. Otherwise, as a juvenile, as a sub-adult into an adult, this will happen. They are territorial, they are solitary animals, they can fight each other for dominance. Now that being said, sometimes accidents happen. So the next couple of them are more based around a crush type of injury. Now, this can happen if you have a high basking spot in your beauty's enclosure and whether it be through clumsiness or uncoordination or simple food response, you've just chucked in a whole heap of feeder insects and they've gone mad, jumped off the top of the uh, basking spot, land on their tail a bit awkwardly, that crush and that impact can cause damage to the tail which down the track can uh, create problems with tail rot. Other issues with having uh, high basking spots and uh, maybe some loose decoration is the actual decoration or the, the basking log or the rock falling and, uh, and crushing the, the beardie's tail or leg. So these two can be prevented by simply eliminating the risk of the fall from height and the crush. Uh, have a lower basking point so that way the baby doesn't need to climb at this age, allow them to develop and get their sense of coordination before you start throwing in some higher perching spots. While we're still on the crush injury side of things, uh, there's something to be very mindful of. As you are transporting your baby beardy home, whether that's from you know, a breeder or from a pet store, 
uh, and you're pulling the baby out and you're playing with it and it's all cute and then you put the baby back in the uh, in the little tub, little carry case and you accidentally crush the tail between the lid and the container. This simple action is enough to cause trauma and tail rot. Keeping your uh, enclosure free from bacteria and in the situation of a bearded dragon, keeping the humidity to an appropriately low level will prevent other issues such as respiratory infections but if there is any trauma, reduce the likelihood of it becoming tail rot. So access to adequate UVB and uh, appropriate levels of calcium supplementation will also prevent the, uh, the likelihood of your dragon developing medical conditions, uh, including tail rot. So guys, the biggest thing that we cannot control are the things that we don't see. Now, as a reptile buyer, you're coming to a breeder like myself, or you're going to a pet store, and it has to be a, a trust relationship that we are looking for after our animals. Now, things that you can do to safeguard yourself is to thoroughly inspect whatever creature it is that you want to buy. Have a look at the toes. Make sure you do a digit count. Have a look at the quality of the tail. If there's uh, that grey shading, if there's any black spots, if there's any funny looking tips, uh, discuss it with the breeder. So having this discussion early and up front with the breeder or the pet store will at least give you peace of mind that you know what their policy is when it comes to returns, refunds, uh, covering any medical costs. So if you are buying a dragon that does have a nip tail, ask your breeder what are they doing to manage that condition. At the end of the day, it is an open wound and it does need to be treated. Not only this, you want to know that you can take this animal home and continue the treatment yourself. Okay, so yeah, it looks like my baby does have tail rot. Now, I've got a better idea of how it may have happened, but Ian, what do we do to treat our baby to bring him back to health? So there it is, the million dollar question, how do you treat tail rot in bearded dragons? So guys, the first thing I always suggest, if you have any concerns with the health of your reptiles, please take them to a specialist reptile veterinarian. They've got the expertise, they've got all the equipment, they can run the tests to find out exactly what is causing the problem. As I discussed earlier in the video, the importance of this cannot be understated. If left untreated, your baby can suffer. So going down this avenue is going to be very thorough and it's going to be very comprehensive. The veterinarian is most likely going to want to take some samples so that way they can test to make sure they know exactly what they're treating. Uh, unfortunately, if you just threw a broad spectrum antibiotic at a bearded dragon, it's going to kill off all the good bacteria and the good parasites living inside their stomach. So in state, you're going to get these antibiotics and possibly some cream to, uh, to treat the tail. Now, what happens if this isn't successful um, and this course hasn't improved the, uh, the look and the quality of the tail, then the veterinarian is most likely going to suggest an amputation. So this doesn't mean that the tail is going to be locked off completely. No, all they're going to do is a little bit of dead tail at the end. They're going to take it off and maybe a little bit more just to cover that they've got all the rot out. Okay guys, so here's the home remedy that you can do. Simply, all you need is a shallow dish. Uh, all you need is enough water to cover the tip of the tail that is suffering from the tail rod. And you want a diluted betadine mix of about 80% water, 20% betadine to give you a, uh, a dark tea look. Now, you want to soak the tip of their tail, the affected part, for about five minutes, two to three times a day. So guys, I've got a little baby beardy here. He did suffer a bit of trauma. He did get a uh, bit of a nip to the tail. Like I said, guys, accidents do happen. Here at Cookies Critters, we do take all measures to, uh, to split our babies up according to size, uh, but sometimes accidents happen. Now, this little guy is gonna be a perfect example of how to treat tail rot. So I've set up a little bath here. We're gonna roll into actually treating his tail. Okay, guys, so here it is here, right? So we have the tip of the tail was injured and all we want to do is submerse it in the uh, betadine solution. Now, like I discussed before, all we want to do is soak this for five minutes, about two to three times a day. Five minutes later. All we want to do is gently pat the tail dry. We don't want to be too aggressive here, just a bit of paper towel. 
and just uh, gently pat it. You want to make sure that the paper towel, when it leaves the tail, is dry. A bit damp there. So there you have it. The uh, baby's tail has been treated and is now dry. I'll uh, repeat again later on this evening and uh, let's get back into it. So guys, in the uh, comments below is a, uh, a cream that you can also put on after you've done the, uh, the betadine mix. And uh, essentially this creates a barrier to prevent any further bacteria getting into the tail. My shield will keep them out. Now this can take anywhere from a couple of days to about two weeks, depending on how quickly you caught the tail rot and the severity of it. Now, if you're not sure if the rot is improving or getting worse, uh, a simple method is to use a, uh, a nail polish and just to put a mark on the tail at the end of the, uh, the rot where the good healthy part of the tail starts. And that way, if the rot starts to digress, you know it's getting better. But if you start losing more tail to the, the dark rot, then you're in trouble. Like I said, guys, I cannot stress it enough. Please take your beardy to the vet and get them seen. Early intervention is crucial here. So guys, if you've encountered tail rot at home with your bearded dragons or other animals, please do us a favor, drop some comments down below what caused it and how did you treat it. So guys, that's a wrap. If you found today's video informative, please do us a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel and turn on those post notifications. And as always guys, if you've got them, keep your beard treated and your beardy heated.